Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to our first in a series of uh, educational uh, referee webinars. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, I'm Wayne Jackson. I'm your uh, SDA, and I'll be acting as one of the moderators uh, for this evening's session. Uh, a little background uh, uh, to start with. Um, first, uh, there are no soccer games, uh, and there haven't been any, been any since uh, since mid March. And we, uh, being um, the SRC, wanted to stay connected with you. And uh, obviously, we couldn't do it at the ref day of the Sounders. Uh, the RDA in Ellensburg is not going to happen this mm -hmm. year. And so we're trying to use this as a vehicle to, uh, uh, you know, uh, reach out and, and touch each other. Um, second, we uh, wanted to um, have an initiative to continue education and, and, you know, give you tools for your tool sets for when the, uh, the games do uh, resume. Um, there are a lot of uh, no, materials out there, but we thought it was important, and I'm going to use a soccer term here, to have some homegrown material because we have uh, people in our state with uh, a vast experience and um, would like to share that with you. And that was uh, kind of the genesis for uh, putting these sessions together. And um, I, the third is th these series um, is uh, uh, it's a collaborative effort. Uh, it was a small group that started out with uh, right now, and uh, we may be expanding that. Um, but uh, to give you an idea who who's working on the ones that you're seeing tonight, uh, we have uh, uh, one FIFA referee, Katja uh, Koroliva. Uh, we have two former national referees and current national coaches. We have Philippe Dor and Mohamed Zarabi. And um, we have some SRC members. Uh, we have Leslie Poirier, who's our SDI. You have myself and Richard Meeks, who is the adult rep on our uh, SRC. And we have a couple technical advisors. Uh, we have Jim, we, we put Jim off to the side, but he's a technical advisor. He's our SRA. And Dave Augustavo, uh, many of you may know as um, uh, a WOA assigner, but he's also the national assigner for, for our area. So that's kind of the group that has been working uh, together to put these uh, sessions together. And like I said, it's a collaborative uh, effort uh, on all of, uh, through all of us. Tonight, we do have a couple of ground rules. We would like to... Um, uh, ask that everybody's mic is uh, uh, muted uh, if, if it's not already done so. Uh, it should have been automatically. Uh, and the second, the reason we kind of are eliminating some of the pictures is to make sure we have some video in our productions tonight and we want to maximize the bandwidth that we have available to us. Um, uh, in this session tonight, you will be asked uh, some questions. There may be a couple polls. Uh, when those sessions come up, uh, uh, you'll, you'll, it, it, there'll be a breakaway and, and you'll know when the, those are going to be happening. Uh, a couple other ground rules. If you have questions regarding uh, something that is covered in the presentation, um, we're going to ask that you use the, uh, the chat box uh, for those, okay? Uh, so please do that and uh, we'll try to monitor those. Uh, uh, as the session goes on. And if they're at toward the end, if there's one or two or three kind of themed, uh, we'll ask uh, the group to, uh, to try to answer those for you, okay? Um, we also would like to record this session. Uh, so just to let you know, we will be doing that. Hopefully uh, that's more for us. It's a training for us and also for uh, making, perhaps making the, uh, the session available uh, later on for uh, people that could not join us uh, this evening. Um, Leslie and I are uh, also very interested in your feedback regarding the overall presentation um, and, uh, and how it's going. So we'd like to hear what's good, uh, what could be better, what could be approved upon. Uh, so if you can email either, uh, to either uh, Leslie Poirier, who's uh, at sdiwirereferees.org, or myself at sdawallreferees.org, 
that would be uh, truly great. Okay. Uh, you didn't join it uh, tonight to hear me talk. Uh, we're going to lead off our series tonight with um, uh, a session called When the Game Changes. And this is uh, a presentation uh, uh, put together by Mo. And um, I'm going to turn the, uh, the screen over to Mo and the session over to Mo uh, to carry it on. So thank you, Mo. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Do you guys hear me okay? Okay, let me see. Am I mute or? No, okay. Everybody hear me okay? Wayne, do you hear me okay? Yes, we hear you. Okay, perfect, you're, perfect. You're, you're okay. good, Mal. All right, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, Wayne, thank you for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending this, our first session. Uh, yeah, also, I'd like to thank the SRC putting this, you know, by the effort that they put in to put this series of educational training, virtual training, especially during this difficult time together. I, I hope all of you that are attending this session, they're doing well, your family and yourself are well during this uh, difficult COVID-19 situation, okay? And uh, as, Wayne explained the topic for tonight is when the game changes. Some of you probably have seen that maybe because I, I know I have presented, you know, some other in other occasion in other setting that we had. And also when we have been working, when I've been working with some of you, we have talked about this, this you know, about this topic. And why, how did I come up with the idea with this topic? What caused me to, you know, put this presentation together? As I have been working with you, <clears throat> or referees out of the states, I have seen a number of the games that, uh, as you know, you have been referring a lot of games, the game changes. And uh, for, for many reasons. I will discuss it as we go on. And uh, what do you mean, what do I mean by game changes? Intensity of the game changes, the speed of the game changes, you know. And, we as a referee, when we are uh, managing the game, managing the player, if we do not change our approach to the game, then what's gonna happen? Will not be a good result. We're gonna lose the game control. So that's why I thought, okay, I need to put something together and have this dialogue and discussion with, you know, together to, to make this point. As I said, some of you already heard that, probably some of you already may have tried it too. You know, so. My first slide to make the point I'm trying to make is this road. <clears throat> that is a highway. As you see, miles and miles ahead of you is clear. Very straightforward. You probably put your car on cruise control 70 miles per hour listening to your favorite music. And as, as goes on, a relatively safe road. And then, you reach this road. Are you going to be driving the same way? Are you going to still keep your car under cruise control? What happens if you do? You probably end up in the bottom of the hill. If I bring it to the game, resemble this to the game, it would be the same thing. You are not going to end up bottom of the hill, but you lose the game control. Yellow card, number of yellow card and red card will keep coming and the game become unsafe, injury and so on and on and on, okay. So, objective based on this topic, based on this title, ob object, our objective for today session is this too. What do you do when the temperature and intensity of the game changes. Furthermore, even more important is, how do you prevent the match for reaching that point in that temperature and intensity? What is going to lead to the game changes? to the temperature of the game being changed. 
that is more, that is very important question that any of you answer, we can make this point about this presentation. Okay. I'm listing number of item here. In my view, that can cause the game intensity changes. Missing a calls, not setting proper tone at the beginning of the game. As you know, when you start the game, especially when a team hasn't seen you, the players measure you up. How are you going to approach the game? How are you going to call the game? Elsie Baharmast, who is a retired FIFA referee who lives in Colorado and retired uh, CONCACAF and FIFA inspector, had a very good presentation answering this question. And uh, he resembled the game to an airplane that is you know, the flying, taking off and landing. It was resembling beginning of the game and at the end of the game to airplane taking off and landing and saying how these two periods of time is so critical for us to do proper thing. So setting a tone is, is a proper way. If you do not do that, it's going to, you know, lead to the temperature of the game going up. Okay. Lack of respect for the decision of the referee. Embarrassment and frustration of the teams or embarrassment or frustration of the players. Or some players or one player. Excitement. A goal is a score, the team gets ahead, you know, the number of the goal. So the game gets excited and then, you know, the temperature will change. The fans get involved and so on. A scoring goal or losing goal? Perceived injustice at a call. The player feels that the call that you made was not fair, was not right. The yellow card that you gave was not, you know, fair. Or the call that you missed, it should have been called. Dealing with the victim, not the offender. Sometimes a bad fall happens and a player gets upset and retaliate, and we are dealing with the victim, with the retaliation, not with the players that caused that. A no call followed by retaliation or retribution. History between the teams. They have rivalry or is a playoff. The losing team goes home. Change change in coaching instruction. As you have seen it, you know, probably a number of times. Sometimes the coaches send the enforcer in. Or they get the team excited in a you know negative way. Serious fall challenge. Serious fall play that is missed. Or even you call it, but they still cause the temperature of the match going up. These are the list that I could think of that can cause the match temperature being changed. Conflict with the players. They're starting in that game or they brought it in from the previous game. Okay. So the game has changed. You have number of tool in your toolbox that you have to use to bring it back. I'm gonna list that, those tools that you need that to bring the game back. And uh, I think you're gonna get a pause to also answer the question regarding these tools, okay? 
what are the tools? What are the approach that you need to apply to a game for match control, to control a match? Positioning. You have to be in right position to see the foul properly. Fitness, you have, to have, you have to be fit to be in proper position, to be close to the play, not calling long distance calls. Communication, you need to communicate with your team, with your ARs, if you are fourth official, fourth official, communicating with the players also, with your body language, with your tone of whistle. Controlling the technical area. Benches, coaches. These are all are the tools that help you to control your match. Teamwork with your crew. Player management. Sometimes some players need more attention than the others. Quiet talk, open talk, public talk. Fall recognition and fall selection. Mechanics and signal. You're using proper signal. You're using proper uh, mechanics. Now, if I ask you To make the point I'm trying to make, if I ask you to only take one, you can only take one of this, one of the item on this list, one of these tools to control your match, what would be that only one? I know you need them all. There's no question, but just play a game with me. Play this game. If you choose one, you have only one, what would be the most important one? Please fill out the polls and submit it. Katja, are you gonna share with us when it's done? We're almost at 80%, so I'll give it another five seconds. Okay. Here are your results, Mo. Okay, here's my result. Okay. Positioning, okay, 15%, uh, high level fitness, 1%, communication, 42%. Okay, control of the bench area, 0% teamwork, 12% player management, 12% fall recognition, 17%. Okay, and proper mechanic and signal, 1%. All right. Thank you. As I said, these are all important tools that you need to use. But in my view, the most important in all of those is here fall recognition, especially fall selection. When the game is boiling up, when the game intensity has increased, to bring it back, of course, recognition is very important, is how you are going to select your fall. You need, is basic, you need to call more. You need to keep it simple. You need to call more to bring the game back. But the question is, where are you gonna call more? Are you gonna blow your whistle? The game is 1-1 you know, one, one at 88 minutes. Uh, you're gonna call in a PK in the penalty area? That is not warranted? Where are you gonna call more? 
Let me ask you, also ask this question from you. Please respond. Where do you think majority of the falls take place on the field? Take a minute, please answer it. Okay, very good. Defensive third, 32%. Center, center circle, 1%. Penalty area, 8%. Middle, 36%. Near ARs, 1%. Near benches, 1%. Attacking third, 21%. I agree with your selection, especially middle of the field and the penalty area of falls committed by the attacker coming out. These are the area that most of the falls take place. To put this presentation together, I did a study of basically I show you a statistic uh, later in next slide. I had a number of the games that I had, basically I took the diagram and marked where the falls took place in, in, in the games. Okay. In in my view, based on my experience, these are the these are where majority of the falls takes place. And because this is where majority of the falls happens. And I'm, I'm suggesting to you to, to bring the game back, bring it back to the, under the control again, make simple calls in the non-critical area, in this area. I just put a happy face here for you to remember this point that I'm trying to make. I show you number, I measured it in number of games that I had and marked basically the diagram where the most of the falls happen. Statistically, I show it to you that majority of the falls on the game that I measured happened in this area. So call more in this area, keep it simple. Center of the field and ball coming out of the penalty area. It will help you in match control. It, it will help you to bring the game back. Now, in this area, keep the bar higher. If happens, do not check it out. Call it, but keep the bar higher. The simple call that you can make here for match control, you are not gonna be trying it here unless really you know, the game deserved that. Unless the, that contact deserved penalty in the penalty area. So keep the bar higher in your fall selection in this area to bring the game back or even prevent it from getting to the high intensity and auto control game. See, I don't know if you see that or not. These are, the, these are all the paperwork, all the diagrams that in almost 50 games, I marked where most of the fall happened. In 48 games that I assessed to put data, to create data for this presentation, which was total of 877, 91% of it happened in the middle of the field and penalty area coming out. 
which I put a happy face there. 9% of them was in the other area, in the critical area, in the penalty area or around the penalty area. So players naturally commit less fall in those area too. So if you call more in that area, it's not something as strange for them. It will help you to bring the game back. Also will prevent the game getting out of control. I'm gonna, we're gonna watch some clips to make the point that we are discussing. These are the falls that has happened in so-called happy face area that not being called. These are the examples. These are the, it was hard to find the clips to support, you know, the point that I'm trying to make, but I think these clips will be helpful, okay? Here is, you will see a attacker, a defender, a attacker falls not being called. Either way, he's Haverly charging in. Mao bumped off the ball and no call. That's uh, yeah, that's somewhat surprising. Yeah, she she pushed her away. Pushed she her might out have of the had way. an opportunity to clear that out the yeah. end line and or out the sideline instead of the end line to avoid the corner, but no call by our official who was right there. I think Coach DJ was asking that same question to one of our officials on the side. And the Falcons score. As you see, the number eight wide, the attacker. Simple push in the close to the AR caused the defender kick the ball across the goal line, corner kick, and they score out of the goal. 20 minutes in the game. The referee has 70 more minutes to dig out of this hole that made. And let's do it again. Let's watch it again. Look closely at this number eight, which following the defender. Where he's Haverly charging in. Mao bumped off the ball and no call. That's uh, yeah. that's somewhat surprising. Yeah, she she pushed her away. Pushed she her might out have of the had way. an opportunity to clear that out the yeah. end line and or out the sideline instead of the end line to avoid the corner, but no call by our official who was right there. I think Coach DJ was asking that same question to one of our officials on the side. And the Falcons score. Okay. Another clip. I'm showing two clips here. They're both of them on the same game. And both contact that happens, you will see, is in middle of the field. Especially one of them is very simple, one that he misses. One of them is very obvious one. And he's not calling it and see where the game is going to end. It, there's no cost on making these calls. Okay, middle of the field, he goes on, do not make the call and gives the throwing. When the contact like that, even not as hard as this, softer happens, what we need to do, I'm sure your intuition says, okay, is something there, something is there. And based on the intensity of the game, where you are, you have to be thinking where we are, how the game is going, what do I need to do? Uh, do I need to bring it back? Do I need to call it tighter? When that contact happened, your first question you ask yourself, okay, 
your intuition says something was there. And then where I am? Is this in the happy face area? Is this area that is no cost? Blow your whistle. It's not gonna cost you anything. It will help you in the game control. Let's look at the next one here. Okay, a clean up tackle in the middle of the field, although it didn't land much on the shin, or like, but it was good enough calls to make. Was not called, and that's where we are. And also the players are connecting it to the previous contact that was not called. Simple calls were missed, the game goes down the drain. Now, these two clips, again, are the same game. Two simple calls on each clip not being called. One of them, even the team that made the foul end up scoring the goal. Simple, by the center divider, right in the middle of the field. Simple call. player comes in with a careless tackle. The white team loses the ball. They take the ball and they score the goal. How is going to help you in your match control? Simple call. Please make it. Next one. Again, this is the same game. There is number of the contact. Majority, I mean, almost all of them either are in the center of the field or done by attacker at the end of the field. Okay, almost all of them were simple falls, was in the area that is not going to affect the game much, but it will help you in game control. Now, as I discussed during this presentation, you might, say that what I'm saying that is inconsistent and fall doesn't matter what where happens should be called. Why do we bring the bar down in the middle of the field, not in the penalty area? 
okay? What I'm saying is as long as you are consistent in so-called inconsistency, following this principle that we discussed and approach by paying attention to the spirit of the game, throughout your game, you are perfectly fine. The argument that fall is fall no matter what is not correct and it will not help you in a game match, in match control. Let me see, let me go to the previous one here. The point I'm trying to make is based on the law five. Not too long ago, a word was added to the law five that gives you this ability to use this approach that we are discussing. And that word is a spread of the game. Law five says decision will be made to the best of the referee ability according to the laws of the game and the spread of the game. This word spread was added just a few years ago. And will be based on the opinion of the referee who has discretion to take appropriate action within the framework of the laws of the game. We have assessment criteria that U.S. soccer assessment criteria that states referee avoided decision that may have been technically correct, but not practically, but, but practically wrong. So to bring the game back, we, use, we need to use the common sense to control the match. And it's not inconsistent if you use that approach, bring the bar lower in the area that costs you, costs nothing, and keep the bar higher in the penalty area and call more to bring the game back. Here as example, for instance, for this statement here, you have a game that is 7-8-0, and you have a contact in a penalty area that, okay, is 50 or 60, 40, and are you going to call that against the, the team? The team already is seven behind, eight behind. That is one example. If you do not do that, everybody understand that. In order to help to control the match. So the game is out of control. The game intensity has come up. How do we want to bring it back? You need to be close to the play, run to the spot the calls you make, be vocal, let the players hear you, use your whistle properly, hard fall, soft fall, just offside or ball go out of, you know, out of the field. These are all different the way you blow your whistle. Show urgency in your body language, in facial expression. You guys remember Kalina, a retired FIFA referee? He was excellent in communicating with the players, the Italian referee that did the World Cup final, in communicating with the players through his body language. In normal communication that we are sitting in front of each other, a study has shown that communication has three elements, three parts, body language, tone of words or power language, tone of words that we use, the way we use the words, and word itself. 55% I mean assigned to the body language. How, that's how it is important. In just normal face-to-face -face communication. 38% is tone of voice you use. And 7% the word. Now, if you bring this to refereeing, even becomes more critical. The body language, the way you signal, your mechanic, and your facial expression after you see a contact, even that is more than that. 
tone of your word. You don't talk too much, but the way that you use your whistle plays that section here. So it is very critical. Show urgency in your body language, in your tone of words, in your tone of your whistle to bring the game back, to tell the players that they are crossing, you know, the red line. This is another important. The game is boiling. The game is getting out of control. Do not give advantage unless the goal is imminent or you have very clear promising attack. Even if the game is getting out of control, but one team is way behind five C score, you don't need to give advantage. That goes back to the example that I brought. Be practically correct. Read the game. Read the feeling of the game. Read the culture of the game. Think, think, think. Do not rush. You want to bring the game back. Take your time. And slow your restart. Call more in happy face area. Okay? Keep it simple. Now, closing our session, what can you do to possibly prevent and reduce the intensity? Keep it simple. Call more falls in the happy area. Keep the bar lower in those area. When the game back to the normal situation, if the player wants to play, okay, let him play. But pay close attention to that. The intensity has gone up, call more, call in those area, bring the game back. If you reach the boiling point in your match, you should do what you should do, be closer to the play, be vocal, Show urgency in your body language. Do not rush, take your time. Don't give advantage on the, the goal eminent. And you have very good promising at that situation. And call more in the happy face area, okay? Now, go on and what I, what I suggest you to do is this principle that we discussed, this approach that we discussed in this presentation. When you watch a game on TV or a game uh, you are present and you are watching actual game, let's please pay attention to this approach and see what I'm explaining makes sense or not. Write down the, where the falls are happening and count it at the end of the game. Do you see? Check to see if the game that is in control, was well, that approach helped it or not. Try to practice this concept that we discussed in a game that you will be watching, you know, in, in future. Okay, this is end of our presentation. I have one more slide to do. Please follow this principle that I mentioned to you. And I think we'll help you not to be late like this referee. Okay, thank you. Thank you for attention. Thank you for participation. Kacha, you wanna take over now? I think I'll hand it over to Wayne. Okay, Wayne, okay. Wayne, please. Okay, I just uh, sent out in the chat box uh, an invitation for anybody that um, has any questions, specific questions, uh, or something that may be confusing um, that Mo talked about in, in his presentation this evening. So uh, feel free to uh, you know type it in your in the chat box here. We'll give it a few minutes, and if a few uh, yeah. percolate, we'll. Uh, 
uh, we'll, we'll give we'll give take a crack at them. Okay. And one question maybe we can they can answer is when is because I had present this before. I think maybe some of these referee have heard this presentation. Have you heard this concept? If they have tried it, has worked for them, they can share their experience in the text that they put in you know in a chat. Yeah. Yeah, um, I also want to do one administrative thing here. I, uh, I want to apologize to everybody. We, we were supposed to have had a, a pretty much an unlimited no, uh, cap on tonight's uh, presentation, uh, but um, it the system kind of hung up at 100 tonight, and we subsequently, uh, Leslie was able to fix that. So uh, we apologize for that. Uh, and the future sessions, there should not be an issue with you getting in. So, uh, Mo, I'm gonna, uh, there are a couple of questions that are okay. kind of pretty good. Uh, one of them is, how would you speak to players about lowering the temperature of the game without sounding condescending? And I'm gonna add on that, maybe is there a difference between talking to uh, boys and girls, men and women uh, in, in their game? Yeah, it, yeah, of course it matters, the distance that you have, it is important. Uh, to look at the uh, you know gender and culture, what the publicly normally expected, you know I, we when we get to the game, what we need to is a common sense. I you cannot I cannot give you a formula for everything all the time. We need to approach the game with the players from beginning to the end. Somehow express the attitude and culture that we are in it together. I'm not here against you and you are not against me. Let's, let's do it together. Let's finish this game together uh, in, a, in a safe manner, in an entertaining manner that everybody enjoys it. Now, how are you gonna approach it? You have to look at the situation, you know. There are times that you have to, you know, get more, you know, more rigid or maybe you, your voice even sh should express that you are upset, but you have to look at the situation you know what it is, always display respect, always most important, first always seek to understand, then be understood. When you are talking with the players, when you are talking with the coaches, if they are talking, if they are saying something, listen, listen to them. And when they are done, then express your point. The point that the fact that you seek to understand them first, they, 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 they think that, okay, they are listening to you. They, they were hurt. And when you give them, you know, direction what to do, they respect properly. I, I hope I answer your question. Okay, Mo, uh, there's, a, there's another one. Uh, and it said, uh, should you set the tone before the game when checking in players? Um, I'm going to answer that one for you. I think yes. you mentioned you mentioned it uh, in your little slide where you had the pie, uh, uh, the pie diagram about seventy percent of your communication with yeah. body language yeah. and looking professional. And I think that's when you you really set the tone for what you're going to be in that match. Would you agree, Mo? Yeah, I agree. I mean, when you again, as as we mentioned that the, regarding, I brought the example of S. E. Baharma's presentation you know, the take off the airplane. When you are walking on the, on the field, uh, the players and coaches measuring you up. Even you haven't started the game, they, they make some image of you in their mind. The way that you dressed is very important. The way you guys talk to, you know, walk with each other, very important. You have to do your best to look as professional as possible. And approachable also, very respectful and approachable because that will build up. If you do not that properly, you already start in a hole that you have to dig out of that hole. It's like you are, you, you already, you're saving, you're saving a, a credibility, saving account of your credibility is zero. You don't have anything to withdraw. So it is very important getting on the game on time, getting at the field on time, look professional, all of you guys together. Okay, Mo, there's, a, there's another question, and I think I'm going to throw it Katja's, toward Katja to, okay. try, to uh, try to answer this one, if you will, Katja. 
Uh, it says competitive teams want intensity and the referee, you know, so I guess it's a question of what is the balance? I mean, you're going to have competitive games. If you're refereeing a state cup final, a high school boys final, 4A, uh, and Koch has certainly been in a lot of uh, intense situations. Uh, how does this uh, an intensity of the competition uh, balance with what you're saying in your in your presentation. So, Katya, can you take a crack at that? Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, so, while you can certainly have intensity, it has to be completely counterbalanced with player safety. Um, and without player safety, we sacrifice uh, injuries, the game, and everything that revolves around this beautiful sport. So, um, you can reach a peak of some sort of an intensity as long as you feel that the safety is not jeopardized. Uh, that's a short answer. Okay. Mo, do you want to add anything to that? No, uh, no, perfect. Good answer. You have to, again, you have to feel the game. You have to think. And the players talk with you with their action. You can look at their body language, their facial expression. This game is thinking, thinking, thinking. Okay? You feel the game. And you'll see that, as Akacha said. If they are playing hard, but it's safe, yeah, that's fine. If they want. And also, sometimes they talk to you. Okay, ref, let us play. Okay, then do, don't do that till it gets to the point that gets out of control. You know what I mean? The game that, the game that is finishing with, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight yellow card, two, three red card is not the game. It's not that game that is played by intensity, but by safety, it's not. I mean, the one question I ask you, what do you think is the good average yellow card and red card in each game? If I answer that, maybe you guys put it in the chat. What would be the good, reasonable average of yellow card in each game? I know game to game can be different. Put it in chat, please. Okay, Mo, and then there's one more question that we're going to end with. Uh, okay. It's kind of a combination of a couple. Uh, and it has to deal with the history and the experience of the teams and perhaps the players um, taking on a little bit of the personality of their coaches, you know? Uh -huh. uh, so how do you, again, balance that with what you're trying to, to get across uh, in this message? We, we need to do our homework before we get on the field the best we can. We have to escort the team. We have to escort the you know, players before we get on the field. And when you are aware of that, when you are mindful of that, then, it gives you good, uh, good understanding what to act, when to act, and how to act. So you have to be mindful, you have to be prepared, you have to be paying attention that there is an issue between these teams, there is an issue between these two players, you know, and you can, especially with some experience, you know, especially if you have some experience behind you, you know, you, you will recognize that. When I did my study, uh, on referees, part of that PhD, I asked the participants, has refereeing helped you to develop people and leadership skill? Yes or no, and how? Over 95% they said yes, and they list what? One of the answer I never forget was, refereeing is macrocosm of life. All of you that especially that have some experience behind you, you have life experience. You have seen conflict out of the field. You have seen conflict at your work. Bring those experience on the field. Read people. There's a book I suggest you to read called Emotional Intelligence. Daniel Goldman is the author. It talks about we as a referee, you know, we need to be smart reading the, you know, knowing the laws of the game from beginning to the end. Uh, with the high Q, you know, IQ, I'm sure most of you guys are. But most important is how emotionally we are being, you know, our intelligence. Knowing ourselves, we knowing our strength and weakness, and most important, knowing other people. We have social awareness. 
trying to read people, understand the people, show empathy for people. Okay, Mo, well, coming back to your question about uh, what would be a reasonable amount of cards to expect in a kind of a competitive match, you know? Uh -huh. um, most of the uh, respondents were, and uh, again, we didn't get a whole lot, but most of them, you know, uh, one to two yellow cards is fine, you know? I, depending on the circumstance, yeah. it, the game may have an incident, deserves a red card, but that's okay. Uh, yeah. But it seems like, you know, uh, a couple of yellow cards in a competitive match seems to be uh, the number that everybody's living yeah, with. Yeah, very reasonable. Yeah, very reasonable. Yeah, that, that's, I agree with you. I agree with you. But which game is out of control? Which which the point that you have to recognize the intensity is changed? That is one measurement that you ended up giving five, six yellow cards, you know, and keep going up. It's not coming down. The simple way is calling more, slow down the game. Where are you gonna call more? In the area that costs nothing. If it happens in the penalty area, they did it, call it, don't chicken out. But you do not decide the game on Friday, let the player decide that. You use all the tool, tools that you have in your toolbox to control the match. Okay, Mo, uh, I think uh, we're going to go ahead and end this session uh, now. Um, anybody out there that has, again, uh, we're going to have an open invitation to send uh, either Leslie or I an email on your, on your feedback. Uh, a little advertisement again uh, next Monday at 7 o'clock. We're going to have another um, one of these uh, webinars. I think uh, Koch is on deck for that one. Uh, and... Uh, uh, so we encourage you to uh, tell your friends about this and um, we like to extend the invitation for you to join us again next week. So thank you very much uh, everyone for your taking an hour out of your night uh, for us. Thank you everyone.